I am often banging on, show me the evidence, show me the data, show me the statistics. And, of course, there is one organisation in New Zealand that's a whole job is to get the data, get the statistics, and then publish them for us so that we can know what's going on, or at least on what basis we can have discussions about policy and our lives and where we're going. Um, statistics to New Zealand does that. And, boy, it's released a whole lot. It's got a whole lot coming out today on inflation and the cost of living and uh, how much tougher it is and how we're spending and what the price literally of keeping, keeping yourself fed, keeping yourself alive is. To the talk, uh, talk about these stats and the most interesting ones of them is uh, Jason Atwell. Oh, well, no, we're just, we're just getting him on the phone. We'll give him a moment. We're going to pop him up, are we? Are we? Are we? Yeah, 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 yeah. He's there. No, he's not there yet. No. Is he there? Is he good for us or not? He's good. He's okay. He's there. Jason, g'day. Sean Plunkett here. Welcome to the platform. Nice to have you with us. Good morning, Sean. Thanks so much for having me on your show. All right. So a bunch of stats have been coming out about basically the cost of being a Kiwi, the cost of being alive. To your mind, what are the most telling or, if you like, the headline statistics that you guys have got for us? Yeah, we've got all kinds of headlines for you, Sean. Um, well, last week we released the retail card spending, which is, you know, what we uh, New Zealanders spend on their electronic cards, like debit cards and credit cards. Yeah. Spending was up 1.7% in the September 2022 quarter. Yeah. Um, adjusted for seasonal effects. Yeah. Um, and spending's up across a number of retail industries, um, uh, coming from things like consumables, so that's your groceries and your liquor. Yeah. Um, but also a little bit of a bounce back in your um, your hospitality type stuff as the COVID restrictions. Okay, does start that with. mean, does that statistic mean we've got more money and we're being, I don't know, more generous, living a little larger, or does it mean the cost of living has gone up? Well, we measure the cost of living as well through um, the Consumers Price Index. So the September quarter CPI comes out this morning, actually, at 10.45, but I can talk about the June 2022 quarter. Yeah. Well, um, tell us about that. Index. Not good. Well so, the, well, so just quickly, the CPI is a headline measure of inflation experienced by New Zealand households, and for the year to June 2022, it was up 7.3%, um, and that the highest it has been since sort of 1989, 1990. Yeah. Um, a lot of things contributing to that increase, um, but one of the big drivers in the June 2022 year was construction prices So, um, yeah. and rentals, so your, your housing costs, basically. Yeah. Um, and that was driven by a number of things. So, you know, it's it's been well documented, supply chain issues, labour costs and demand. So pushing Some up of the, which the have eased a little. Building. Potentially, like I say, we we haven't we don't release the September quarter uh, CPI until ten forty five this morning. So I can't talk about this quarter. Yeah, um, I could talk about food prices for September. Yeah, yeah. Let's let's go there. Really. Yeah. So in the month of September twenty twenty two, which is this year, it's a lot of twos uh, compared to September last year. Food prices were up eight point three percent. So, yeah, that's pretty, yeah, it's pretty high. So it's, it's driven by a lot of things. So you'll know if you've done your grocery shopping, so grocery food prices up 7.7%. Tomatoes, fruit crazy. Oh, yeah, fruit and veggies are up 16%. Yeah. What? Yeah, I shopped, what? shopped a couple of weeks ago, getting a few bits and pieces from the... Um, What's the that down to, Tomatoes. Jason? Uh, well, fruit and veg can be definitely impacted by... Um, seasonal factors, so that, that is part of it. Um, but, you know, just everything has factors of production and that we know that fuel and stuff like that has gone up and it's been going up globally. You know, the cost of transporting things around, um, you know, just a number of factors contributing to that. Supply, demand, all of those types of things. All right. Okay. Jason, look, some other stats out, uh, and you may not know about these. I was going to introduce them in the program later. Stats on sea level rise. Do you know those? Yes, I do. Yes. Yep. Okay. Now, look, I'm just looking at these, and we might as well do it now, seeing we've got you here. Um, now, you've released the stats on sea level rise for the 20 years up to 2020, right? Yeah. Okay. Auckland, in the 20 years to 2020, 
The sea level rose 25 whole millimetres. That's 1.3 millimetres a year, right? Yeah, I think we actually released 120 years of data with that. Oh, wow. Um, coastal sea level rise. So it, that, that data goes back quite some way. Like some of those sites where they measure the... Um, quite interesting, actually. Some of those sites where they measure the sea level rise they've been doing since 1890-something. I've got to say that overall it doesn't scare me. Um, to be honest, yeah. I was quite surprised. Yeah, I, I mean, it, it'd probably scare you if you were living on a beachfront property or you were on some island where, you know, the coastal sea level rise, you know... Was of 1.5 millimetres a year? No, see, that wouldn't scare me either, even if I was living <laughs> by the beach, to be honest. Yeah, hey, can well, I ask... The other thing is, just on that, Sean, if I, if I may, that, that we did have a look at the the last 60 years of sea level rise compared to the previous 60 years, because as I said, we've got over 120 years of worth of data for that for that metric, and it, it is in, has increased faster over the last 60 years than it did in the prior 60 years. Right. Okay. Well, fair enough. Can I ask you when you are compiling um, any sort of statistic or, or, or data, mm. how... Rigorous do you have to be to get it right? And does Stats New Zealand ever get it wrong? Or are you using really, really strict methodologies to come up with the figures that you share with us? That's a great question, Sean. And, and I love this one because cause we, we're, we're a member of a whole international statistical community. So yeah. We're members of the, the United Nations and the IMF and the OECD. So... So there is a rigorous set of standards and some pretty hefty, I, I suppose you'd call them statistical textbooks. So, you know, the world comes together and talks about what the standards are and how to measure them so that there's consistency across country, across countries, so that, you know, when we're talking about un our unemployment rate, we're measuring in the same way as the US, UK, other countries, so we can compare. Um, and in terms of, like, you know, what, how do we compile it all? You're right, we've got to be... We've got, a, we've got an important role to be as accurate as we possibly can because we know big decisions are being made with our data. So, you know, the Reserve Bank will look at the CPI when it comes out at 10.45 today and they'll start to think about what they're going to do for the official cash rate and monetary policy. Um, the Treasury will be looking at it, for, you know, in terms of their, their forecasting as well. So um, if you get it wrong, down. if you put the dot in the wrong place, it can have quite significant consequences, can't it? It can, yes, it can, yep. Um, and, yeah, I, I mean, in CPI, for example, which comes out today, a lot of people ha uh, use that for indexation of contracts, of super um, superannuation contracts, things like that. So, yeah, it can have wide-ranging effects if we get it wrong, for sure. Yeah. Um, so, Jason, 10.45 today it is we get the latest CPI. Where can people go? If they want to cut out the terrible news media, mainstream news media, and just get stats as they come out from Stats New Zealand, what's the best website or the best way for people to directly access the work you guys do? Well, thanks, Sean. So you can go directly to the Stats website, which is www.stats.govt.nz. Yeah. But I must say the media, including, you know, all media, including yourselves, do a great job actually of getting some of that stuff to the public mm. um, because, you know, you know, my, the likes of my mum don't generally go surfing the Stats website so that, you know, people might pick up, you know, what's happening in the media and all that kind of stuff. So, Jason, tell us, what was the last big boo-boo that Stats did? Be honest. Last big... Well, the last uh, time last you guys got it horribly wrong. Horribly wrong? Um, I don't know. Well, um, we, we have in the past had to revise the, the CPI and that, that caused a lot of problems because, as I said, a lot of people use that for indexation. Generally, we don't revise the CPI. The 2018 census didn't go as quite as well as we would have liked. We didn't quite reach as many New Zealanders as um, we would have liked to, and so we're striving really hard for this upcoming census in March 2023 to reach as, as much of Aotearoa New Zealand as we possibly can and Look, for all of these things, Sean, we totally rely on the, the goodwill of, you know, people filling out the surveys. Um, you know, this is both New Zealand households and New Zealand businesses, and they do a wonderful job of providing this information because without them, we would have absolutely nothing to report. <laughs>
Good on you. Look, thank you for your time this morning, Jason, and I hope a few people are looking at it at CPI. As you say, it is an important figure and it hasn't been good the last quarter. Let's see what's happened this quarter. I thank you for your time this morning. Thanks so much, Sean. Have a wonderful day. You too. Cheers. That's Jason Atwell, spokesperson for Stats New Zealand. And I don't know, maybe it's not very sexy, but how can we actually have a discussion about anything in this country if we don't know what the facts are? And it's not like we can go around just relying on the reckons of unregistered, you know, undertakers, is it? Um, you actually do want some facts and figures when you're going to have an argument or a discussion about something.